What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. Welcome to 2018. Happy New Year to everybody watching. It is going to be a great year. I have no doubt in my mind that 2018 is going to be on par, if not better, musically than 2017 was. So to start off the new year right, I decided that I was going to ask myself a question. What am I looking forward to musically in 2018? What are my predictions? What will happen? What do I want to happen? Now these are no way 100% accurate. These are just hopes and predictions that I expect or not expect, but that I want to happen. So I jotted down seven sentences and I'm going to expand upon them. And afterwards, I want to hear from you guys. What are you looking forward to in 2018 musically? You know, album release wise, uh, new rappers coming up wise, uh, rappers breaking into different fields. I don't know, whatever you think could happen in 2018 that you would like to see happen. Now, I do have to say that this is not like a most anticipated albums list, so I did try to stay away from doing all of that. I didn't want to just put, this guy's going to release an album, this guy's going to release an album. No, I feel like I can do a separate video for that, and I might if there's interest in that. With that said, my first prediction for 2018 has to be a rapper releasing an album because this rapper has not released an album in almost six years, this June, it'll be six years since Nas has released an album. That right there is a crazy thing to imagine considering that Life is Good was very well received. Everybody loved that album. They said it was the best Nas album in years and they were right. I still remember a tweet in 2013 where Nas says, next month I'm going to announce my album title. Well, next month never came, but the thing that I got out of that tweet was that Nas definitely has albums, if, or excuse me, Nas definitely has an album, if not albums, that he could have released in this time period. Now, I understand that Nas is very, um, you know, involved in investing uh, in companies and, you know, doing that whole like entrepreneur thing. And so that takes a lot of time. And when you're seeing a lot more money coming out of those ventures than music, I don't blame Nas for not wanting to jump right back into music. Music can only take you so far, especially as, as a veteran like Nas. Nas is gonna sell uh, well regardless, and then he'll go on tour and he'll be able to sell out. But I think it's a lot more work than what he's doing right now, in a sense. So I do anticipate that Nas is going to put out an album. What will it sound like? That's the big question. I'm hoping that it sounds as good as Life is Good, as well as like the, the recent guest features that he's been doing. Like in the last, I would say three or four years, Nas has done a lot of guest features. If you haven't listened to a lot of them, definitely look them up on Wikipedia. He's done ones with like Schoolboy Q, Dave East, Rick Ross. You know, those are just a couple that come to mind, but I feel like he's always killed his guest features. And that has me excited for his next album, whenever it shall release. 2017, the end of it at least, was pretty much like the year of the collaboration album. And I've said it on Twitter that I want collaboration albums to stay in 2017, but unfortunately that's just, or 2017, did I say 14? 2017. I would love for them not to make it into this new year, but I'd be naive to say that. Labels know that they're going to get their money off of collaboration albums, and rappers know that they're going to get the hype, the buzz, regardless if they're able to deliver on the quality aspect of it. So I have a prediction that Despite all the collaboration albums that we get in 2018, we will get one that is simply mind-blowing. What that is, I haven't the slightest clue. I mean, I think when I think of a, a mind-blowing collaboration album, the one that comes to mind is Black Hippie. But, you know, 
at this point, it's really not going to happen. I know all the members have said it's never going to happen. Stop holding hope and all that. But I feel like at some point, there's just a sliver of hope that it will happen. And it could in 2018. After everybody else releases their albums. I know J-Rock has one, Schoolboy Q. I'm sure Absol's been working. Um, I don't know if Kendrick will release anything in 2018. If he does, I feel like it could be like a, like a companion piece to Damn. One of those untitled, unmastered type of releases. That would be kind of cool to see, but I don't know if he's really set himself up for another album like that. Whereas Untitled Unmastered had all the the performances that he was doing and all that aspect to it. Regardless, I expect something to be mind-blowing. I don't care if it's a commercial success collaboration album, but I want one that's like unexpected, like, I don't know, Royce the 5'9 and 2 Chains. I feel like that would be an interesting combination that could work out. Something like that. My third prediction is one that really seems like it will come true. Drake's commercial success and dominance will continue at the cost of his artistry. I'll be the first to admit that Drake's views and more life are not memorable albums to me. They are commercial successes in the highest form of it. But musically, it doesn't feel like Drake is trying to do anything crazy like he was in the past. I feel like these two albums were like, yeah, I know I'm a commercial success. Here's 20 something songs and they all sound like hits. Put me on the charts. That's the vibe that I got from those two albums. More so, More Life. I know Views was more constructed as an album. More Life was marketed as a playlist. And because of that, it had all these different sounds and flavors and styles. And you just wanted to listen to all of them and enjoy all of them. And there's some good songs on there. I won't front. But I feel like Drake can't do that again. Drake needs to figure out something else now. Like, you need to reinvent yourself every so often. And so, I don't know what that looks like for Drake. He's done it all. He's had the commercial success. He's got as close as he can to a classic album. Um, it's debatable which one you choose. Nothing was the same. Or Take Care. I know there's people that regard both or one or the other. But I feel like Drake in 2018 will just continue to be a commercial success. But I don't know if that will come at, uh, it will come with the cost of his artistry, I feel. Now I do kind of have a little bit of hope because I just heard Drake's verse on Lil Wayne's Family Feud remix and that is the best guest feature from Drake that I've heard in a long time. It's Drake actually rapping. So maybe that's what I want. I want Drake back on his mean rapper type of game, really killing it and going off. And there's some singing, you know, splashed in there. Obviously, he's good at doing the singing, but I don't know. I, it's hard to say what I want from Drake, but I know what I want from Drake when I hear it. So I'm hoping, but I'm also kind of expecting him to just do another album where he'll run the charts. This next prediction is something that might be hard to believe. We will have an up and coming rapper emerge in 2018 that doesn't have a shady past, that doesn't have a bunch of charges to his name. I have a hope and a dream that that will happen. In 2017, it really felt like a lot of the rappers that were going viral were just scumbags. It was like the rise of the scumbags in 2017. You had the triple X dude who may or may not have assaulted his ex-girlfriend who was pregnant at the time. And people are willing to die on a hill over this situation. People will jump at you. You don't know all the facts. You don't know. You weren't there. I was there. I seen it. I, I believe in X. But I feel like the reason why I don't really rock with them aside from the music being bad is because of his attitude on social media. He doesn't use it as often. He's kind of taking a step back. But when he was on it, he showed that he was really just not a good person. And so that leads 
me to feel like he did do it because he does have like these kind of like mood swings and anger issues it feels and so i want to see a rapper that doesn't have any like issues he's not going to be the guy that's on dj academics twitter because he has this video and he's talking about this and that no i want to see a rapper go viral who is like lyrical or he's very smart constructive and you know something like that i just don't want to see more rappers like the triple x guy or that weirdo 69 person who is a pedophile i don't want to see more of that in 2018 i don't care if everybody in the world likes the music we have to hold some of these artists accountable for the stuff that they're doing we can't sit here and be like okay the music good turn up no we can't be like that j electronica will release a new song then he will go back into hiding for who knows another decade j electronica is someone who we all hold hope onto we don't sit here and be like okay this is the year j electronica is coming i'm so excited and then by the end of the year we're like damn he let us down again no we've been let down enough and now it's come to a point to where it's like, okay, if J Electronica releases something, I will listen to it, enjoy it. I will get a little bit hyped that he'll actually put out an album and then he'll go back into hiding and I'll forget all about it. I'm hoping that Act 2 eventually comes because I feel like it could be the classic album that J Electronica has hyped it up to be. I think the, the long wait and the fact that he's so good as an artist has hyped it up to unreal expectations, but if J Electronica can deliver, you know, quality wise, I don't care what the sales do, I don't care anything else. If I like the album and it's as good as I know it can be based on J Electronica's discography, then I'll be satisfied. But regardless, I do feel like J Electronica will pop up at some point in 2018, whether he releases a song, pops up on a guest feature, he'll be back. Reading is fun. And so my next prediction is more rappers will want to start doing their autobiographies. I don't know if anybody is going to release one in 2018. I'm sure somebody at some point will pop up with something. But a lot of the rappers like from the 90s, they're kind of winding down. It's a new generation and even like the, the rappers from the Wu-Tang Clan, you know, they're, they're still popular. But they're also getting older and I think now would be like a good time to get some autobiographies from different rappers like the Wu-Tang Clan or an Ice Cube or like a Scarface. Scarface, oh wait, no, no, excuse me. Now that I say it out loud, I remember Scarface has his autobiography out already. You should go look, read that, pick it up. It is amazing. I loved it. It's short, but it's detailed. You get what I'm saying though? Rappers like Wu-Tang Clan, Ice Cube, people that you know would have great stories to tell. I want to see more autobiographies in hip hop. It doesn't matter if the rapper is still relevant today. It doesn't have to be somebody that made it out of the 90s. I would still want to see something like that because I know that there's a lot of great stories out there that haven't necessarily been told. Someone like a Memphis Bleak who has never been the star. He's always played the background to Jay-Z and you know Rockefeller and all that. But I'm sure he has great stories to tell. My last prediction for 2018 is Lil Wayne will finally be free from Cash Money's death grips. It's been a long, drawn-out trial case. I haven't even gone to trial yet. It's been a long, drawn-out case for Lil Wayne suing Birdman and trying to get the money that he's owed. Wayne has been optimistic in a lot of his music. He's like, yeah, Cash Money is no more. It's done. I'm going to Rockefeller or Rock Nation. But it hasn't happened yet. You know, I love his optimism and I know that he'll get free. And I think 2018 is the year that he does. And then we're going to see Wayne actually drop the Carter Five. And if he's still going to run with that album that was originally called Funeral. Or, I mean, we're going to get the Dedication 6 Reloaded mixtape sometime soon. So I know there's going to be Wayne music in 2018. But I'm hoping this time it'll be a commercial release. And we can see how, I think it'll be interesting to see Wayne's first week sales 
mainly because I want to see how much damage has been done. I know that that might sound like a bad thing, but I want to see, like, compared to his last album, like, how, is it going to be a lot less or has the weight for another Lil Wayne album increased the amount of people that actually want to listen to it? So I'm sure the streaming numbers will be high, but it remains to be seen what he'll do first week when he's actually free from cash money. I do have hope that this is the year that it happens. It, it just can't drag on much longer. It's already hurt Wayne's career and it's made Birdman just the most bitter looking person ever. There's no compromise at this point. Just pay the man what you owe him and let him move on and go to Rock Nation or wherever he wants to go. So those were just seven predictions that I had for music in 2018. Now I want to hear from you guys. What are you predicting? What albums are you looking forward to? What events do you think could happen? Um, and then if you have any like feedback on my predictions, definitely let's talk about it in the comment section below. Then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.